Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and A video right here on youtube.com slash no DQ CAW. And as always, no DQ.com, your source for the very latest in WWE and TNA. We are coming off Monday Night Raw. The road to WrestleMania continues. Got a lot of questions here regarding Raw and other topics, so let's get right down to it. First one today comes from Epic Kid23. Hey Aaron, big fan. On last night's Raw, what did you what did you think of CM Punk's interruption to the Undertaker's tribute to Paul Bear? I know it's scripted, and I'm all for CM Punk's heel run, but I thought that was very messed up. Your thoughts? Well, if you thought that was very messed up, I'm curious to know what you thought about JR's head going up Vince's ass, what you thought about Randy Orton saying that Eddie Guerrero was in hell, and Katie Vick, all these things. What did you think about those, those angles? Um, I didn't think it was that bad. I thought that they handled it about as well as possible. I figured it was inevitable that, you know, everybody knew about Paul Bear dying and that because of that, you would have to do something with CM Punk somehow disrespecting it. And um, I thought they, they, they did an okay job with it. I mean, they, they did the whole tribute to Paul Bear, which was very cool. Undertaker coming out and saluting the urn. And uh, they had the graphic up there and that was it. That was the tribute. And then CM Punk's music hit and he came out. And he said, you know, I want to send my condolences for your loss at WrestleMania. I didn't think it was that bad. I, I thought that they handled it well. And, um, you know, the whole ending with Raw with Kane and CM Punk and Undertaker coming out and Undertaker and Kane saluting Paul Bear, I thought it was very cool. Um, the only thing about the whole angle and the, the show in general that I thought was a little weird was how they went back and forth between being shoot and work. Um, obviously this real person that played Paul Bear, William Moody, passed away, but then they have Kane, you know, upset about the death of his father, which of course in real life, Paul Bear is not his father. So I, I just thought that that was a little weird, but besides that, you know, I, I, I enjoyed what they did and how they, they handled the whole Paul Bear deal. And I figured they would have to do something like that. All right, this one comes from Richie Koala. Hey Aaron, do you think Chris Benoit will ever have a spot in the Hall of Fame in the future, even though what he did to his wife and son in the suicide? I get asked about Chris Benoit all the time, and I'm just going to make it very clear here. The chances of Chris Benoit going in the Hall of Fame in WWE are slim to none. It will almost certainly never happen. 50 years from now, maybe culture will change, society will change, and maybe they'll induct him then. But... I, I just don't see it happening. I don't think that they're going to bother putting Chris Benoit in the Hall of Fame. Who, who would it please? I mean, Chris Benoit murdered his wife and his son. It, it, it's something that people don't want to talk about. And uh, when, you, when you bring up Chris Benoit, all those memories are also going to be brought up as well. Uh, so I, I don't think that they're even going to bother with it. And I, I, if I was them, I wouldn't. I mean, WWE is a publicly traded company. And... Um, you know, they would be glorifying a murderer. And I know, obviously, they would be glorifying his accomplishments as a performer. And you know what? I, I, I do think that WWE should not completely ignore Chris Benoit. Um, I think that they should show matches of Chris Benoit. And, you know, when they do their top 50 finishers of all time, they should throw in the cripple across face. But, um, you know, they don't have to induct him into the Hall of Fame. I, I do think that they are going a little bit too far with just completely ignoring him from history because, let's face it, he was a big part of WWE history. And um, he did, you know, put his body out there and he sacrificed himself for WWE and he ended up getting all those concussions as a result. Um, so I do think that um, his career should be acknowledged more than it is. All right, this one comes from Alev70598. Hey, Aaron, big fan of the show since episode 150. What do you think of this as an ending to the Punk Undertaker match at WrestleMania? Punk locks in the Anaconda Vice and keeps it in for over a minute. Undertaker cannot answer the three count and is knocked out. Um, I don't really think that that finish would go over very well. I think that it's a bit, first of all, I think it's a bit anticlimactic. That, you know, he, you know, everyone would be expecting him to answer the three count when he doesn't. I think people would just be disappointed with it. And um, I, I, I just don't see it working with a live crowd. And um, a lot of people at home, I think, would, would be disappointed as well. I think if, um, if you are going to have CM Punk beat Undertaker, then it should be with a pinfall. 
I, I don't think submission is the way to go. I think that they should, um, if, you know, that's the big question, should CM Punk end the streak? There's a, a lot of mixed feelings about that, but let's say Undertaker wants to put over Punk. Um, let Punk beat Undertaker with uh, the GTS. I think that's the best way to go. Um, I definitely don't want to see a submission. I don't think a lot of people would like to see a submission finish, even if it's Undertaker just passing out. I, I don't think it would go over well. Is there a chance that this year's WrestleMania could be overpacked and overhyped and result and resultly failing and delivering the high expectation that comes from these matches? Well, that's usually the problem with WrestleMania. This isn't just the problem with this year's WrestleMania, but every year WWE always puts in the big hype machine for WrestleMania and it's all about the uh, spectacle and the hype and the build up for WrestleMania and more times than not you know, I have to be honest, WrestleMania, at least for me personally, um, ends up being a disappointment. I, I, I expect so much out of WrestleMania. You know, WWE does all the video packages and the weeks and weeks of build-up and hype. And then uh, the matches just end up being average. And in the next month at Extreme Rules, they have better matches. Um, so that that's uh, the issue I see with uh, WrestleMania in general, just the overhype of it. And... Um, I, I do think that this year's WrestleMania has a lot of potential, but then again, I say that about every WrestleMania. But um, I, I do hope that um, the matches can deliver, and it's WrestleMania. Let the guys go out there and go all out. That, that That's one thing I expect out of WrestleMania. I expect the matches to be the best of the year, and they go out there and they take chances that they won't normally take on a regular pay-per-view. Because it's WrestleMania, you have um, over a million people watching, and um, well, more than that, millions of people. And um, I think you should, you know, give the people something that they'll never forget. All right, this one comes from Between the Eyes, 1985. Hey, our longtime viewer since no DQ&A video number one. That's very cool. Thank you for sticking around. Just one TNA question that really bugs me. How does TNA creative think making D'Lo Brown a part of Ace and Eights makes the group any better? From who is D'Lo Brown in the scheme of things? Alex from the UK. Well, I guess the idea is that D'Lo Brown was part of the inside of TNA, so that it would explain how Aces and Eights was able to get into the building all the time. You know, D'Lo Brown was um, part of part of TNA management, and he was um, working from the inside. Uh, so that that's how they explain that. Um, but it is kind of funny because I was looking on Twitter, uh, you know, during uh, the pay per view. And um, somebody was saying, hey, the new guy just interfered in the match. And the, the new guy was actually D'Lo Brown. So it's funny because a lot of people don't know who D'Lo Brown is. A lot of the you know newer fans out there and the TNA fans, they, they think D'Lo Brown is, is just a figurehead and, and not a former uh, superstar. So I thought that was kind of funny. But yeah, I mean, that, that's why they did the whole thing, you know, having, having somebody from the inside working for Aces and Eights, which would explain how they're able to get away with so much when they're supposed to be this outside rene renegade group that shouldn't be able to get into the building. All right, the last one today comes from Dev0094. Hey Aaron, I didn't realize that John Cena wasn't on the last Raw until, until it was over. What do you think about him not being on Raw? Big deal or no? Um, it was a little bit of a surprise not to see John Cena. Instead, they had a video package of John Cena and The Rock. And you know what? I, I don't see a big deal with it. it. It's good to have a little bit of a breather and not have John Cena on every single week. And, uh, you know, this week was more about Paul Bear and the focus on um, Brock Lesnar and Triple H. So, you know, there's other matches they're trying to build up and, you know, they still have the video package. I think it's good to you know Brock wasn't there. So, they didn't really need to have John Cena there. You know, if, if Rock was there, then obviously uh, you'd want to have John Cena there in some fashion. But it's best to, you know, spend one week focusing on a couple matches and then the next week um, focusing on a couple other matches. I think, uh, you know, that that's a good way to go. And I'm sure, you know, we'll see John Cena every week until WrestleMania. I mean, they got, they still have another month of buildup for WrestleMania. So you don't want to, you know, overkill it and have John Cena on constantly. And you don't want to, you know, burn people out on the idea of, of Cena versus Rock too before the pay per view. Although I'm sure a lot of people uh, watching this right now already feel burned out about Rock versus Cena too. But you know, I'm just saying in general to the general public, you don't want to overexpose John Cena. And you know, it, it's good to keep him off every now and then and make him a little bit more of a special attraction as well. 
All right, that'll do it for this edition of No DQ&A Video. Thanks, as always, for watching. Um, if you enjoy the videos, please continue to spread the word about No DQ&A Video. Um, post a link of this video on Facebook or Twitter or whatever social media sites you go on. Uh, just keep spreading the word. I really do appreciate the word of mouth and um, all the support from you guys, so keep it up. And uh, stay tuned to NoDQ.com this week for all the latest regarding WrestleMania 29. And I will see you later this week for more No DQ&A video. Thanks for watching.